The ground tissue of plants includes all tissues that are neither dermal nor vascular. It can be divided into three classes based on the nature of the cell walls. Parenchyma cells have thin primary walls and usually remain alive after they become mature. Parenchyma forms the filler tissue in the soft parts of plants. Colenchyma cells have thin primary walls with some areas of secondary thickening. Colenchyma provides extra structural support, particularly in regions of new growth. Sclerenchyma cells have thick lignified secondary walls and often die when mature. Sclerenchyma provides the main structural support to a plant. Parenchyma Parenchyma is a versatile ground tissue that generally constitutes the filler tissue in soft parts of plants. It forms, among other things, the cortex and pith of stems, the cortex of roots, the mesophyll of leaves, the pulp of fruits, and the endosperm of seeds. Parenchyma cells are living cells and may remain meristematic at maturity, meaning that they are capable of cell division if stimulated. They have thin but flexible cellulose cell walls, and are generally polyhedral when close-packed, but can be roughly spherical when isolated from the neighbors. They have large central vacuoles, which allow the cells to store and regulate ions, waste products, and water. Tissue specialized for food storage is commonly formed of parenchyma cells. Parenchyma cells have a variety of functions. In leaves, they form the mesophyll and are responsible for photosynthesis and the exchange of gases. Parenchyma cells in the mesophyll of leaves are specialized parenchyma cells called chlorenchyma cells. Storage of starch, protein, fats, oils and water in roots, tubers, seed endosperm and cotyledons secretion, wound repair and the potential for renewed meristematic activity. Other specialized functions such as aeration provides buoyancy and helps aquatic plants in floating. Chlorenchyma cells carry out photosynthesis and manufacture food. Dot. The shape of parenchyma cells varies with the function. In the spongy mesophyll of a leaf, parenchyma cells range from near spherical and loosely arranged with large intercellular spaces, to branched of stellate, mutually interconnected with the neighbors at the ends of their arms to form a three-dimensional network, like in the red kidney bean Phaseolus vulgaris and other mesophytes. These cells, along with the epidermal guard cells of the stoma, form a system of air spaces and chambers that regulate the exchange of gases. In some works the cells of the leaf epidermis are regarded as specialized parenchymal cells, but the modern preference has long been to classify the epidermis as plant dermal tissue and parenchyma as ground tissue. Colenchyma. The first use of colenchyma was by Link who used it to describe the sticky substance on Bleacher Pollen. Complaining about Link's excessive nomenclature, Schleiden stated mockingly that the term colenchyma could have more easily been used to describe elongated subepidermal cells with unevenly thickened cell walls. Colenchyma tissue is composed of elongated cells with irregularly thickened walls. They provide structural support, particularly in growing shoots and leaves. Colenchyma tissue makes up things such as the resilient strands in stalks of celery. Colenchyma cells are usually living and have only a thick primary cell wall made up of cellulose and pectin. Cell wall thickness is strongly affected by mechanical stress upon the plant. The walls of colenchyma in shaken plants may be 40 to 100 percent thicker than those not shaken. There are four main types of colenchyma, angular colenchyma, tangential colenchyma, annular colenchyma, locunar colenchyma. Colenchyma cells are most often found adjacent to outer growing tissues such as the vascular cambium and are known for increasing structural support and integrity. 
Kalvang Kamasal are very conspicuous under the microscope due to the higher refractive index of the thickened cell wall. Sclerenchyma. Sclerenchyma is the supporting tissue in plants. Two types of sclerenchyma cells exist, fibers and scleriods. The cell walls consist of cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. Sclerenchyma cells are the principal supporting cells in plant tissues that have ceased elongation. Sclerenchyma fibers are of great economic importance, since they constitute the source material for many fabrics. Unlike the colenchyma, mature sclerenchyma is composed of dead cells with extremely thick cell walls that make up to 90% of the whole cell volume. The term sclerenchyma is derived from the Greek sigma kappa lambda eta rho omicron sigma, meaning hard, quote, it is the hard, thick walls that make sclerenchyma cells important strengthening and supporting elements in plant parts that have ceased elongation. The difference between fibers and scleriods is not always clear, transitions do exist, sometimes even within the same plant. Fibers Fibers are basta generally long, slender, so-called prosyncomitous cells, usually occurring in strands of bundles. Such bundles of the totality of a stem's bundles are colloquially called fibers. The high load-bearing capacity and the ease with which they can be processed has since antiquity made them the source material for a number of things, like ropes, fabrics and mattresses. The fibers of flax have been known in Europe and Egypt for more than 3,000 years, those of hemp in China for just as long. These fibers, and those of jute and ramy, are extremely soft and elastic and are especially well suited for the processing to textiles. The principal cell wall material is cellulose. Contrasting are hard fibers that are mostly found in monocouts. Typical examples of the fibers of many grasses, agaves, lilies, musatextilis and others. The cell walls contain, besides cellulose, a high proportion of lignin. The load-bearing capacity of formium 10 axes as high as 20 to 25 kilograms per square millimeter, the same as that of good steel wire. But the fiber tears as soon as too great a strain is placed upon it, while the wire distorts and does not tear before a strain of 80 kg per square millimeter. The thickening of a cell wall has been studied in lionum. Starting at the center of the fiber, the thickening layers of the secondary wall are deposited one after the other. Growth at both tips of the cell leads to simultaneous elongation. During development the layers of secondary material seem like tubes, of which the outer one is always longer and older than the next. After completion of growth, the missing parts are supplemented, so that the wall is evenly thickened up to the tips of the fibers. Fibers usually originate from aristomatic tissues. Cambium and procambium are the main centers of production. They are usually associated with the xylem and phloem of the vascular bundles. The fibers of the xylem are always lignified, while those of the phloem are cellulosic. Reliable evidence for the fiber cell's evolutionary origin from tracheids exists. During evolution the strength of the tracheid cell walls was enhanced, the ability to conduct water was lost and the size of the pits was reduced. Fibers that do not belong to the xylem are bast and such fibers that are arranged in characteristic patterns at different sites of the shoot. Scleriods Scleriods are a reduced form of sclerenchyma cells with highly thickened, lignified walls. These have a shape of a star. They are small bundles of sclerenchyma tissue in plants that form durable layers, such as the cores of apples and the gritty texture of pears. Scleriods are variable in shape. The cells can be isodiametric, prosyncomatic, forked or elaborately branched. They can be grouped into bundles, can form complete tubes located at the periphery or can occur as single cells or small groups of cells within parenchyma tissues. But compared with most fibers, scleriods are relatively short. 
characteristic examples are Bracas cleariads of the stone cells of pears and quinces and those of the shoot of the wax plant. The cell walls fill nearly all the cells' volume. The layering of the walls and the existence of branched pits is clearly visible. Branched pits such as these are called ramifum pits. The shell of many seeds like those of nuts as well as the stones of troops like cherries and plums are made up from scleriads. These structures are used to protect other cells.